Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and in this episode we are going to learn how to write and use our own classes. Whenever we are working with object-oriented programming, we like to abstract data and functionality inside of objects. We then represent our programming world using those objects. Hence the term object-oriented programming. So what we are going to do now is create a really simple class and play around with it for a while. Go ahead and click on the new Java class symbol right here or go to file, new, class. Now instead of just calling it my class or something, let's be a bit more specific. Let's say in our program we have the need for humans, whether it's for biology class or a video game, whatever. So for the name we type in human. Note that classes should always start with a capital letter. Click finish and now we've created our new human class. Now inside of these curly braces is the place where all the action is going to take place. The first thing we need to think about when we create a new class is what it consists of. When I'm writing a class like this, I always like to think this way. What does every human have? Since our example is going to be simple, our humans won't need much. Let's say for now they all come with a name and an age. So let's put in those variables. In one of the earlier videos I said that global variables are bad. In the case of writing a class like this though, we are creating variables that make up the whole class. Name and age aren't just temporary values, they stay alive as long as the human stays alive. The next thing we need is a so-called constructor. A constructor looks and works like a method and it gets automatically executed whenever we create a new instance of this class. A constructor always has the same name as the class itself, so let's go ahead and write it. Now in here we can set up statements which always get executed whenever we create a new human. We will leave it empty for now. What we can do as well is create methods that this class can use. For instance, a human could state his or her name. Note that in this case we didn't have to use the static modifier like we did when we created a method in the main class. Let's leave it at that for now and go back to our main class. We can now go ahead and create a human instance. The concept is exactly the same as when we created our scanner. We have access to a new data type called human, which is the class we created, and we give it the name myHuman. On that, we invoke its constructor using the new keyword and then the name of the constructor. This is very important. Before you can use an instance, you have to make sure to initialize it with a new keyword and its constructor. Otherwise you're going to get errors. Now let's check out what we can do. By using the dot separator, we gain access to all the variables and methods in this class. Here you can see the age and name variables that we created and down here you can see the print name method we created. Now what's with all the other stuff? We certainly didn't create that. Well, this is a concept we will learn about later. As you can see at the very end of this line it says human. Same for age and name. This is because these variables and method stem from our human class. The rest of these methods stem from an object class. You may remember when we talked about exceptions that every specific kind of exception is at its core still an exception. The same holds true here. Every class, no matter what it is, is at its core an object. And every object comes with these methods. Now don't let this confuse you, we will cover it in more detail later. For now just focus on the human stuff. Anyway, since we have access to the name field, which is what we call variables from a class, we can go and change that. Let's call this human Stanley. 
we can do the same thing for the age. Let's say he's 20. And what we can do now is use our newly created method. And if we go ahead and run the program, the name of my human is Stanley, just like we set up here. Now let's create a second human, so I can go ahead and show you why this concept is so powerful and important. Here we have my other human, and this one of course has the field's name and age as well. And now here we call the method as well. And if we run the program again, we get Stanley and Rebecca. And this is awesome, because we just created our own data type with a set of values that are bound to the respective instance. Sure, every human has a name and an age, but the actual values of age and name can be different from instance to instance. And there is a lot more that you can do with this. So we will be spending quite a bit of time on that. Now, one more thing before we end this tutorial. When we created our human instances, we didn't have to import the human class like we did with the scanner. This is because the human class is a direct part of our project right here. In the case of the scanner, it was buried somewhere deep within the Java libraries and we had to import it. When it's already part of your project though, you don't need to import it. Anyway, that's all the time I have for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll be glad to help you out. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.